Hi there and welcome to this new video. So I want to ask you a question. How do you use your social media? Let's take YouTube as an example. How do you use YouTube? Well, in my opinion, there are two main ways to use a social media platform like YouTube. The first one is by using the subscriber feature. So basically, you are just watching the content of the people you subscribe to. You just follow them. You are interested in their ideas, in what they talk about, in the way they present their content. And so you give focus to the people that you selected, right? And the second method is just you search randomly, right? You search for new creators. You search for new content that could be interesting. And once you found an interesting creator, you add it to your list of subscribers, right? That's typically the way that uh, such platforms were used back then uh, um, at the start of those platforms. Now, there is a problem, however. There is a third option that I did not really discuss. And the third option actually is the way that most people use social media nowadays. And basically, it's all based on the algorithm. It's all based on the recommendation algorithm. People just follow that and the content is created not for the humans anymore, but for the recommendation algorithm. So you want to have a certain title, a certain thumbnail, a certain approach of communication just to appease the algorithm so that as much people are going to look and, you know, click on the video, watch the video and things of the sort. Now, of course, the algorithm is parameterized by the people behavior, right? But the thing is that the algorithm just care about watch time and uh, the algorithm just wants the user to watch as much as possible. And why does the algorithm optimize for watch time? Well, because of course, the algorithm wants to have more advertisements, right? Because the whole the business models of these companies is they give us the platform, they allow us to upload videos, but of course, to make a profit, they put a lot of advertisements. That's how they make profit. Now, in this video, I want to propose a technology, a very old and useful technology called RSS to bypass the YouTube algorithm altogether, okay? So, consider the scenario in which you are tired of the recommendation algorithm, you want to give priority to the people you enjoy listening to, to the people that give you meaning. You might disagree with some of these people, but you see meaning in their content, you see meaning in their ideas, and you want to be intentional in your selection. Now, the internet originally was developed to share information, to help solve complex problems by sharing information. It was developed as a research, um, research project, and the internet itself was developed to decentralize information in case of, you know, military wars and in case of disasters, basically. Now, internet has become super centralized, and most of the content there is not even proper information, it's just spam. And with the rise of artificial intelligence and LLMs generated content, it's going to become even worse in the future. So what I suggest for the future is that you start to organize methods to reduce noise, because we will see a lot of noise in the upcoming months and years. So you want to reduce noise. You want to select and improve and learn technologies that reduce noise. And RSS is one such technology. So as I was saying, social media algorithms are designed to maximize watch time. And they are designed like this to maximize the number of advertisements that you get exposed to. This is pretty basic. Everyone knows it. It's elementary. It's all based on, it, on advertisements. The content is just the hook, right? Now, in my opinion, RSS can be used to bypass this. Why? Well, RSS stands for really simple syndication. And basically, it uses the XML format to define a feed of data. Every time a new content is uploaded, let's say a new video on YouTube, this feed of data, this XML feed is updated with the metadata to say, look, this creator posted a new content and then you have RSS clients that check up on the latest updates and they tell you, look, 
a new video just came out to click and watch it right so basically that is the idea now how does it work on youtube now to make this work on youtube you need to first obtain the channel id of the channel of your choice for example to do that you can go to the main channel page you can click on more scroll down share channel copy channel id and basically here i can show this if we search for example here let's see so this is my channel so this is my channel we can reject all in here here we click on more we go down we click on share channel copy channel id and then we have our channel id in the clipboard okay and then we can paste it wherever we want okay now for example i have two channels one in italian as a decimale and one in english stamps and these are the two ids and this instead is the id of the Zoding live channel which is a great channel that i highly suggest so for example these are three channel ids now then you want to go to this url which will contain the xml feed now this url is formed by a dynamic part which is this parameter channel id and here you want to put the id of the channel of your choice okay for example let's go into so let's open this once again let's put uh, sodding live here let's put this one here and here we have this feed of data now as you can see this feed of data at first does not seem like too friendly to read up right we have a lot of tags but the idea is that as we can see here here we have different entries and each of these entries represents a new video for example here we have this title actually typed scripting language with the video id the channel id and the publication date and also here you get the url the url of the for example this should be the url of the channel and we also have the url of the video itself this content right this content it is the url of the video and we can go and click on it and we will see the video itself so reject all once again and this is the video itself right actually type scripting language of sorting daily once again highly suggested the channel to follow so of course once you have this rss client you can just put all these urls uh, to get this feed of data and to use the client itself now in this video i will show a client that is based on emacs and it's called lfeed it is an rss client for emacs basically so how do we configure this well as always my combination is to use use package with straight so i also show this in previous videos and what i want to showcase here it's a simple setup in which we use the package we do the configuration here in the l feed feeds variable we put our urls for example here i have three my italian channel my english channel and the sodding daily channel and then here i put some other configuration now one thing that i added that showcases how to work with l feed is to sort out the shorts right because we don't really want shorts i mean personally i don't like shorts they don't really add too much value into my life i just want long form content or like short videos like 10 minutes videos shorts are like whatever i just watch the entire video itself so basically the idea is that this small function will filter when a new entry is added to the database here i'm gonna check if the url contains the shorts and if it does i'm gonna tag this particular entry as junk right so i'm gonna use this junk and then i'm gonna remove all the junk from my views so technically the entry will still be downloaded but i will not show it in my client itself so how does it work well let's say that we let's use this use package right let's just execute this statement here i go to the end and then I say control x control e then I set this variable, this elf feed feeds. Okay, I set all these variables with the hook. Perfect. Now at this point here, I can just do alt x elf feed, right? And here I get an empty screen because the client still has to update its internal database, right? So basically that's the idea. Now here to update it, I can use elf feed update, which is mapped to the u keybind. Okay, so I say i say you and this is actually going to update my feed now as you can see here i get a bunch of entries with the date the title and the channel where it was taken from with the list of tags okay 
So for example, here I have my latest video on XStamp, a useful templating system. I click on this and I have the link. And then I can take this link and I can just uh, like watch it directly without any recommendation problem. Okay, so that's... Now, why do I suggest this approach? Well, I suggest this approach because as you can see here, there's so much less noise. Here we just get the people that we are interested in. We get the title, which I think is really important. It's just the title is important. The family itself, it's cool and all, but in terms of information, if we are just interested in the information itself, like we don't need a thumbnail because basically the thumbnail is just to make people click on the content, right? But if you are more intentional over it, uh, we are, and, and if you are using the platform in terms of information to gain information and to learn, uh, not to be entertained, then I think the title makes sense. I mean, a, th a good thumbnail is still fun, of course, uh, and it's still okay to use social media as, as entertainment, that's fine. However, I feel like Nowadays, uh, social medias are all about entertainment and they really push all about the entertainment, while, of course, education is uh, a bit harder to do on these kind of platforms. The cool thing about the platforms, however, is that they allow us to upload videos. So they give, they solve the hosting problem, which is not a trivial problem, and they make people discover the content. So I don't want to just bash the platform because of their business model, but I still think that more people should know about technologies such as RSS because in my opinion they give more power to the user. With RSS what you can do basically is you can actually implement a hybrid approach. So most of the time you can select video based on this RSS field, right, this one, and then every now and then you can go and you can use the YouTube recommendation algorithm to actually discover new people, right, but you can limit that. I think it's more healthy to limit that kind of YouTube algorithm approach because one of the most important thing that I think such algorithm sort of like makes us used to is the being passive aspect. Like we don't have to select our content, we are just are presented with content. There's no more searching, there's no more selection, it's just a series of like input that our system gets which in the long term, uh, I think is very limiting when it comes to personal growth and uh, like developing a sense of understanding over the world. I mean, that is my opinion. Let me know what you think. And by the way, by the way, by the way, by the way, this link, okay, there is a cool program, MPV. And if you do MPV and this link as input, something magical is going to happen. And I will leave you to it. I will leave you to discover what is going to happen if you do MPV with the link. And that is a way in which you can use this kind of fields to like bypass the YouTube algorithm and just enjoy watching the content of the people you like that give meaning to your life, basically. Now, I hope this video was interesting. I hope it left you with something useful. If you did, leave some feedback, let me know what you think, let me know how you use YouTube, if you knew about RSS, and if you knew about the fact that, technically speaking, YouTube does offer an RSS feed. Of course, really few people talk about it, really few people showcase it, because RSS goes against this whole recommendation strategy, recommendation approach, so the platform itself, I feel like, does not really want to push the RSS approach, However, they still offer these feeds, which is a useful thing. Now, the feed does not contain all of the uploads of the creator, only the latest. However, if you just put them in your clients, you will get a history by just checking up on the latest updates. And, you know, who knows what they're going to do with RSS. However, it is a great technology that should be pushed more culturally, you know, like it should be pushed more culturally. So that's it. Let me know what you think of RSS. And then to the next video.